This is actually Wagua de Jamaica that my little brother made. Let's cafe. But you know what? It's cute. Como dicen los niños. It's the aesthetic. Okay. Oh my gosh. Imposter syndrome. Hi everyone, my name is Carla and I make videos on project management skills, corporate soft skills, really any kind of skills that help us get through this corporate society that we live in. And I try to do it a little bit from the first generation perspective just because that's what my background is. I'm going to start a series on the technical skills that go into project management. This first video is gonna concentrate on the really high level point of view. We're gonna talk about how to make a strategic project plan but the continuing series is gonna be concentrating on very detailed kind of the day-to-day -to -day tools that I use that help me project manage or deputy project manage or task manage or be a discipline manager. Really, these kind of skills are transferable on any level. Even if you're at an entry level and you're just now managing your first little portion of a project, all these tools are applicable and helpful in any phase of a project. So this video is going to concentrate on a strategic plan to help deliver a project. A strategic plan means many different things depending on where it's being used. An entire company or corporation can have a strategic plan that really focuses on the finances and their goals for their specific company in a very, very high level way. But strategic plans can go deeper than that into perhaps the strategic plan of a business line, which it could be different from, you know, the energy business line from the automated vehicles business line. And then you can go even deeper than that, which is where I'm going to concentrate on a strategic plan to deliver a project, which to me is really just a project management plan. But let's define strategic plan in the simplest way possible, because I feel like we get really bogged down in the corporate world with these buzzwords that eventually they lose all meaning. Hopefully you're not in a conference room on the side there Googling these buzzwords, which is something that I do. So maybe I'm just projecting. <laughs> anyway, so strategy is essentially just a plan of action that a team has to follow to successfully achieve a goal, or in my case, to successfully deliver a project for a client. For me, delivering some sort of transportation infrastructure is my goal. Essentially, it is a plan that can be used for a lot of different things. The strategic plan for a project, or I'm just gonna call it a project management plan, really identifies the tools, the resources, the schedule, the budget, the scope, everything that you need to deliver a project successfully. So a project management plan can really be different depending on the magnitude of your project. So you will probably have a very, very robust, detailed project management plan for a mega project that is, you know, a hundred million dollars and you're not the only one managing it. You have input from all your discipline leads, your um, technical experts, your financial experts, your legal experts. Everyone has input into this management plan. Obviously, you maintain it and you lead it and you make sure that it makes sense because at the end of the day, you are the project manager. But there's also much smaller, much simpler plans um, for much smaller projects that really investing a time into putting a very, very detailed strategic plan is not the efficient way of managing a project because potentially you're putting in more time planning out the strategic plan versus the time that you actually needed to finish the, the project. Balance it out, figure out what's appropriate for the size of your project. Um, so I'm going to go through kind of the essential elements of a project management and I'm going to list them out starting with the three that are basically the most critical. These three things are the most critical things that you will need to identify early on in your project to be able to deliver it successfully. And then I'll go through the protocols that I love to put into my project management plan. Not all project management plans have them established, but these are two things that I've learned from program managing that I now implement in my project management kind of day to day. So for me as a project manager for infrastructure, the biggest things that I need to keep in mind are my scope, my budget and my schedule. Those three things 
essentially lead my life and lead the project and lead what I need to know that I need to control or that I need to manage in order to deliver a project on time within budget and the entire scope of that project so that our client is happy, obviously. Starting off with your scope. Obviously your scope is the one that defines what the project is. What is it really that you're going to design or develop and deliver into the hands of the client to serve whatever audience they need to serve. You need to define your scope in a way that protects you and it protects your client. So the scope needs to be able to encompass everything that you, you understand and your client understands that is going to be delivered for this project. Scope always has to have kind of the appropriate amount of flexibility for when things change or and potentially don't make sense anymore. And you know, you need to negotiate with your clients the scope that needs to be delivered. The next thing is your schedule. I know you thought I was gonna say budget first, but schedule feeds into budget. So I like to do my schedule first. So obviously a schedule needs to be implemented in a way that fits your client's needs, but in a way that is also realistic to be able to perform um, the activities needed to deliver a project in a realistic time frame. So the next one is obviously determining a budget, a budget that fits your client's needs, but is also again, realistic with all the activities that need to go to fit that scope. And if it doesn't work as in the scope is too large for the budget that you have, then you have to go into negotiations with your client. So those are the three things that any project management plan needs to have. Next, a couple other things that I like to add to the project management plan are an organizational chart or an org chart, um, which essentially defines the roles and responsibilities of your team, as well as your client, your stakeholders, your partners, your sub consultants, any, Anyone that's going to be involved with the project needs to be on this org chart. So it's kind of understood everyone's roles and responsibilities to deliver this project. You'll also need to look at your resources or resource matrix that really looks at the activities that you'll need to perform through a timeline to figure out how many people you'll need full time on this project to be able to complete it within a specific amount of time. A resource matrix really kind of goes hand in hand with the budget. Um, normally when I'm trying to determine a budget, I'm making a resource matrix because I'm looking at the scope and I'm figuring out who needs to be involved, how many people need to be involved, figure out their rate. So those are kind of like the critical, the essential things, the skeleton of your strategic plan or your project management plan. I like to go a little deeper and I really like to establish protocols within my project management plan. So what I mean by that is establishing a communication plan, establishing a decision-making process or protocol. These are the things that sometimes you don't add to a project management plan, but that I've learned these are really important. A decision protocol really tells the team exactly who needs to be informed in order to make decisions. It also ensures that the person that needs to make decisions know that they need to figure out a decision. In large corporations, it is not one person that makes one decision, but it is important that one person is accountable to figuring out what that decision is, whether they need to go consult with their experts, their financial people, their legal people, whatever it is that they need to do to figure out a decision. And they're accountable to getting those people together and making that decision, providing it back to to whomever the decision making protocol says that they need to give it to, whether that's the project manager or maybe they go directly to the discipline leads. Essentially, this decision making protocol establishes that early on so that everyone knows who, who needs to be talking to who. I found that that process or that protocol gets kind of de deconstructed throughout a project lifetime. And it's very important to keep it in mind or keep it straight for everyone on how decisions are made in order to help people move forward um, with the project. And that feeds into this communication plan. Establishing a communication plan is super important, um, especially in this day and age where we're all working from home and you don't get to be next to the team that you're working with, right? So it is critical to let your team know when everyone should be CC'd 
when just the leads should be CC'd, when it is appropriate to communicate with the client or a stakeholder or an external person, and whether that needs to be done through the project manager or if they can do if they can do it directly or whether we need to establish a meeting with external people on it um, and who's going to lead that meeting etc the, these two things kind of define me specifically but there are different project managers who potentially don't find these important enough to put into their project management plan and they find other things that they specifically want to establish in their project management plan everyone's different um, the next two things that I like to add to the project management plan are, I would say one of them is critical. Um, it's the risk management strategy. Potentially that'll be its own document, but establishing the strategy, kind of the, what they are and what they're going to accomplish. So, you know, a risk mitigation strategy really focuses on letting the team know that there will be a risk mitigation um, process and the tools that are going to be used for this risk mitigation strategy. For example, potentially there could be making a risk mitigation matrix where they define all the risks possible and what they're going to do to mitigate them. Um, risk mitigation is really about identifying the obstacles that are, or the fatal flaws that will potentially impact your project should they happen. And the point of it all is knowing what they are early on. So that you can create a plan or at least you won't be surprised by them if they do end up showing up. That is all done, however, in its own separate process. Really, it's in your project management plan, you're just saying, we're gonna have one, this is what it's gonna be, and this is what it's going to accomplish. The next one is your quality management plan. Same thing, right? It is quality management is very important and it's a huge process and depending on what what you work on, um, it's going to be different. But it is always important to establish, hey, we do have a quality management plan. This is what it's going to accomplish. And this is what it's going to do to ensure quality. But you know, the quality management plan, it's its own full blown document. So here you're just really outlining the strategy, the risk mitigation strategy, your quality management strategy with the plans to be their own separate process. All right, so that is the outline of every single one of my strategic plans or my project management plans to deliver a project successfully. Everything I mentioned today, you can honestly find online, in a book, on YouTube, I'm sure. And I really just wanted to talk about it from my perspective um, and kind of the little nuances and differences that I do on my day-to-day -day basis as a project manager. Like I mentioned, I am gonna start this project management series where I talk about things like this and the tools that I use on a day-to-day -day basis and hopefully you'll come back for that. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one.